Good evening, good evening, Chatterbox. What's going on, Fair Trade Cafe? What's going on? Happy Wednesday. That means it's Chatterbox. So if you're just coming to hang out at this coffee shop, welcome. We do this every week. Uh, we're a storytelling open mic uh, with different themes. Uh, so we share stories about our real lives. It's a lot of fun. Um, we have a couple of spaces left on our sign-up sheet tonight. And, of course, room on our waiting list if we feel like getting to all of you tonight. Um, it's not really snarky. If we feel like it. Mm, I don't know. Do you look like a good storyteller? Ooh. Um, just kidding. <laughs> all stories, all voices, guys. That's what we're about here. We're not really that sassy, I swear. Um, my name's Jesse. I'm the host and producer of the show. You'll meet my co host here shortly. Um, and just a couple things. Put your hands together for Fair Trade and the Baristas this evening, guys. Yeah. Killing it. Giving us this space, making this possible. Um, and put your hands together for Jared with Hoot and Waddle for recording our chatter pod. Yeah. Um, but let's go ahead and get it started. Um, I was going to go first, but I lied. So I'm going to bring up our first storyteller who's a regular to this show. Put your hands together for Glenn. There's so many pillows. You guys got to keep it going while he's coming up here. Okay, so first of all, I did not, I did not expect to be telling first. I thought I was going second. Uh, oh man. Uh, so my plan was to just like hear the first story and then decide after that. But uh, so in the next three seconds, I'm going to remember a story. Okay. I, I already did. Man. Okay, so this is a story that probably could have fit with uh, last week's theme too. Uh, or was it the week before? I don't know. Dating game. Two weeks. Okay. Uh, so this story is about my very first official girlfriend. Uh, she was like it. We we had already known each other for a little while. This was in middle school either middle school or like my first year of high school and I met her through her brother and one of my other friends and the way I asked the way I asked her out was was really weird because my friend at the time or one of my friends at the time uh had been like calling me out for liking her for a while and she's like dude ask her out I know for a fact she likes you and I'm like yeah I see what you're saying, but what if she doesn't? <laughs> Did you think of that? Uh, so we one day we were friggin' uh, just hanging out at the at the art museum down there, which we did all the time because it was free on Wednesdays and we were broke as hell. And uh, like she's checking out the the exhibit with all the little houses and dioramas and stuff, which was like her favorite thing in the world. I don't know why, but it, she really liked it. Uh, so my friend just says, this is the perfect opportunity. Go for it. The entire room is empty. And then she physically pushes me into the room. And was like, ah, damn it. So me being a total friggin' dork, um, pull this really, I don't even remember exactly what the line was, but all I remember is that I got it from a movie. Because I couldn't do anything that wasn't, at the time, that wasn't a reference to something else. And much, much to my surprise, she, she did, she did end, up, end up saying yes. And this relationship went on for a little over three years. Which is, which to me at least, is a very long time considering we were, you know, friggin' children. Um... Uh, and I look, look, looking back, I made, I, I made mistakes like like a lot of people do. Um, I didn't force myself on her. Um, in case anyone was like thinking that, no one was thinking that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> um, 
But no, the first month or so of our of our relationship, we had like we would like hold hands and we would hug and that's about it. Um, we didn't actually have our first kiss until the, un- until like, like almost a month after we started dating, and she was the one who kissed me in- instead of me making the first move. So I'm like, ah, shit. I was still figuring out the whole relationship thing, um, and it was and it was really sweet. We could like sh- looking back, she could she could tell that I really wanted to kiss her, but was like you know really shy and was like, what if she didn't want to? Um, and this like this was a very very good relationship for a while, but like I said, I I made some mistakes. Um, t- after I <laughs> left, was kicked out, of the school that we both attended, um, we started to kind of drift apart because she lived in Avondale, and I lived here in Phoenix, and we couldn't see each other that much, and we didn't go to the same school anymore. So if I had kept up the initiative to continue talking to her and to you know, communicate, then that probably could have ended better. And the, a lot of our relationship was mostly her making the first move. Because, again, I was small. I didn't know how things worked. Uh, I didn't, well, she was smaller. She was really short. But, again, I was small. Uh, and I, I, think she, I think she had... She had done this before. I, I, I remember asking her if I was her first boyfriend, and, and I don't remember her answer because this was like five ever ago. Okay. Um, and it ended with she, she was, she, I'm being totally honest, she was the one who broke off the relationship because she was the one who always, you know, took the initiative. Um, but it made abs- it made absolutely perfect sense because we we could never see each other. We didn't really feel like we were connecting anymore. So she was the ab- the best absolute sweetheart about it, and she didn't break up with me over text. She didn't like call me and say she didn't do it over Skype. She actually set up a meeting in person um, over at Bluefin, actually. I don't know if anyone's been there, but they have some pretty good teriyaki stuff. Um, and, you know, she said, you know, it's been, like, this relationship has been one of, like, one of the best experiences in my life, but I just don't feel we're connecting anymore. I think we should break it off. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And this was, I mean, she... I had seen her cry before, but she was crying pr- pretty bad when she had to when she had to tell me that. And for quite a while, I understood why that whole thing went down, but I was not really it wasn't really registering to me very well why this or precisely why this had to happen. I I really liked this girl, but it just couldn't work and I was kind of beating myself up over that for a while and even recently I just like started having these memories of things where I could have done better but luckily for me we're still we're still friends on Facebook uh, I still message her every now and again and we're, there's like literally no bad blood between us at all just you know no romance either but it took a quite a long time but yeah i did eventually get over it <laughs> and that's it right on, man. keep it going for glenn seriously guys nothing better after a breakup than blue fins teriyaki i highly recommend it um Sponsorship, sponsorship. 
Speaking of sponsorships, my name's Estevan. I also run the, uh, the shameless self-promotion bit of the show, where I'm going to point out that we have this nice merch box over here that I suggest you check out when the show is over. Chatter represents. Um, and if you haven't noticed, our favorite podcast recorder over here has brought up his iPad that you can register for the newsletter for uh, Hoot and Waddle, as well as check out some of the books that they've got. Moving on to our next storyteller, please help me welcome Joy. Hello, hello. Okay, so this is my second storytelling attempt ever, so it's... When do the nerves go away? Never. Man, okay. All right. So... Thank you. I'm going to try. It's either that or I'm like throw up everywhere, but I'm going to try to embrace it. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so the theme, getting over it. Um, I thought I was good at getting over things. Um, I thought I was really good at it. I mean, I get in fights with friends all the time, and I've stayed friends with them, so I thought, you know, we were able to hang out afterwards, and I was getting over things. But... Um, Really what I was doing was like not talking about my feelings and like not expressing myself and just like shoving that down. So, you know, building up a nice like level of resentment. Um, and so finally, I think um, it just, it, I kind of just exploded, you know. So I ended up having to go to therapy. Like I had a few bad relationships and I thought, you know what, I'm not picking the right dude. Something's up. Let me go talk to a therapist. And so I've worked with this therapist for about four years, and one of the things that he helped me realize was, yeah, like, I don't talk about my feelings at all, like, ever. And what I like to do, instead of getting over things, is I don't actually ever get over them. They just kind of, like, stay there in the background. So, you know, the next time your friend's hanging out, and she decides to, like, ask for a bite of your sandwich and takes the best, biggest, juiciest bite right out of the middle, like the asshole that she is, then you explode on her. And you realize, you know, you're actually kind of pissed because she never gave you that shirt back that she promised she was going to give you. And when she did, it was shrunk because she put it in the dryer, like you told her not to, and she did. So those kind of things, like, started coming up as I was going through therapy. But one of the things that I did learn... It's weird. Like, it's weird when you have that moment when you realize, like, you thought you were some certain way, and then you actually totally are not. And this was, like, this just recently happened last year, um, and it was a big one for me. So I used to work at an aerospace company here for, like, 13 years, and I was doing a lot of audits, so I'd have to, like, wake up super early and drive to these, you know, manufacturing sites and go, you know, on the shop floor with my my steel toe shoes and all that stuff. Um, But one morning I was getting ready to go to this audit, and so I woke up extra early, and I drove through the Starbucks drive-thru because I needed some coffee for this day. And there was this young female barista who was at the drive-thru, and when I pulled up, I typically like to, you know, have a conversation with these uh with with anyone at the drive through it's like you know they want to ask about my day like sure i'll i'll entertain this conversation so she was like hey how's it going how's your day and i'm like uh, it's great i mean 6 a.m but i'm getting ready to go to an audit yeah how's yours and so we were like conversing back and forth and she had just like a great personality a great mood and i'm like all right this is an awesome conversation i mean for 6 a.m you're like make me have a great day and so she hands me my coffee and she says all right well you have a great day my love and instantly my face dropped Because one thing for me, I hate baby names. I hate nicknames, any crap like that. To me, it's a sign of disrespect. I'm not your hun. I'm not your my love. I'm not your babe. Like, no, don't you do that. So instantly, my face dropped, and, like, I grabbed my steering wheel, and I just drove off so angry, so angry. And, um... All of a sudden, I had this moment. One of the things that my therapist has had me work on was these emotion checks. So it's like, if you're having a feeling, like, figure out what happened. So I said, okay, I'm angry. What happened? The barista called me my, or my love, and to me, that was a sign of disrespect. And so I texted my therapist, like, hey, I had this moment. I was able to connect the dots here. And he was like, all right, so, uh, so what if she, uh, so what? 
so what if she calls if she calls you my love and she's disrespecting you and i'm like so what if she's disrespecting me that makes me have rage that means i'm not important i don't matter and he was like oh that's interesting so you just let a 19 year old barista decide whether you matter or not